In a previous lesson, we introduced the definitions of supremum and infimum of a set. We also proved this equivalent definition for the infimum of a set. And in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we will use it to prove that the infimum of the set of reciprocals of natural numbers is equal to zero. We already proved that the supremum of this set is equal to one, and I'll leave a link to that proof in the description. Also, we're going to use what's called the Archimedean principle in this proof. If you're not familiar with that, again, I'll leave a link to it in the description where we prove the Archimedean principle. This basically just tells us that given any real number, we can find a greater natural number. That's going to be useful for this proof. Finally, let's just quickly recap this definition. Recall that the original definition of the infimum of a set is that the infimum, if it exists, is a lower bound and it's greater than or equal to every other lower bound. It is the greatest lower bound. This equivalent definition starts the same way that the infimum is a lower bound, and then it says if we add any positive number epsilon to the infimum, we no longer have a lower bound, because of course the infimum is the greatest lower bound, so we can't add something to it and still have a lower bound. So we'll prove that zero satisfies these two conditions, and thus prove that the infimum of our set is equal to zero. Quickly, just some intuition. Why would we think the infimum of this set is equal to zero in the first place? Well, if we were to write out some of the elements of this set, remember, they're just reciprocals of natural numbers, so they look like this. For larger values of n, it's pretty clear that the elements are getting closer and closer to zero. However, they'll never be negative since it's always just one divided by some natural number. So we suspect that the infimum, the greatest lower bound, is zero. Let's go ahead and prove it. First, we need to prove that zero is a lower bound of the set. As is often the case with real analysis proofs, it's helpful to start by writing the inequality we want to prove, that zero is a lower bound of this set, so zero is less than or equal to one over n for every natural number n. Then if we multiply both sides of this inequality by n, we would have that zero times n, which is equal to zero, is less than or equal to one, and this is obviously true. Thus, we see that we can start with this certainly true inequality, then divide both sides of it by n and get the inequality we want, proving that zero is less than or equal to one over n for every natural number n, and thus zero is a lower bound of our set. And so we've proven the first condition. Zero is a lower bound of our set. Again, we do that by just starting with the fact that zero is less than or equal to one, and then divide both sides of the inequality by an arbitrary natural number n. To finish things off, we just need to prove that if we add any positive real number to zero, we do not get a lower bound of our set. So here we go. We say let epsilon be greater than zero. We know there exists some natural number n such that one over n is less than epsilon by the Archimedean principle. Remember, the Archimedean principle tells us that with any real number x, we can find a greater natural number. Thus, we could find a natural number greater than one over epsilon, and thus inverting both sides of the inequality, we would have that one over n is less than epsilon. So that's how we are guaranteed the existence of our wonderful natural number n whose reciprocal is less than epsilon. Epsilon, of course, is equal to zero plus epsilon, and zero is what we're trying to prove is the infimum. So we see that zero plus this arbitrary positive real number epsilon is not a lower bound, because there exists a natural number whose reciprocal is less than zero plus epsilon. And of course, our set contains the reciprocal of every natural number. So it contains this one over n that we've mentioned in our proof. And so we've proven our second condition. We proved that zero is a lower bound of the set, and we proved that given any positive real number, if we add that real number to zero, we will no longer have a lower bound of our set. Thus, in total, by definition, the infimum of our set is zero. So I hope this video helped you understand this simple example of proving the infimum of a set. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, 
had or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.